John Fuang was often fond of saying that nobody hired us to practice. Now we'd usually say that when people would come into the monastery and try to order us around. This should be that way, that should be this way. And he wouldn't say it directly to them, but after they would leave, he would say, nobody hired us to, be pra to practice. These people certainly didn't hire us to practice, so they're not the boss. We're all here because we want to be here. This is a voluntary practice, and we're all volunteers. The only thing that's really ordering us around is the fact that there is suffering and stress in our lives. And we've recognized that we really want to get rid of it, we want to get beyond it. That's the only thing that's really forcing us. But what this also means is that when we're out on our own, outside of the monastery, and this is the time of year when traditionally people would, at the end of the rains retreat, go their separate ways, there's not going to be anyone riding herd on you to tell you you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to ride herd on yourself, especially when you're in environments where the the prevailing values have nothing to do with the practice at all, or very little to do with the practice. You've got to provide your own internal motivation. And there's a very useful teaching on this topic. It's called the Governing Principles. Three ways of thinking that help keep you on the path. There's yourself as a governing principle, there's the Dharma as a governing principle, and there's the world as a governing principle. Now, usually in Thailand you hear this, these explain this. If the self is a governing principle, it's not a good thing. If the world is a governing principle, it's not a good thing. Only if the Dharma is your governing principle is it a good thing. Taking self as a governing principle to mean that you just do what you want, or taking the world as a governing principle meaning that you'd let yourself or allow yourself to get swayed by the opinions of the world. But that's not what the Buddha meant by those terms. When you take yourself as a governing principle, you remind yourself that you started this practice because you recognized that you were suffering, and there was something you could do about it, and you gave up an awful lot to get on this path. And would you really be showing love for yourself if you abandon the path? In other words, you take your regard for your true happiness as a guide. So you want to keep reminding yourself of that when you start getting lazy, when the practice suddenly seems too demanding. Ask yourself, oh, exactly what path are you following when you lie down? That's a story that Ajahn Mahabhava tells. That when he first went to see Ajahn Man, he went to pay his respects, and then because he'd been tired from the trip, lay down to take a nap and had this dream where Ajahn Man came to him and said, you know, this is not a place for pigs. We're not following the path of pigs here. Just lying around and wallowing in comfort. And so you can ask yourself when you're feeling the, the impulse just to let the mind wander as it likes and let, let yourself relax as you like. Okay, whose path are you following here? And this is the path that you would follow if you really felt genuine goodwill for yourself, genuine concern for your own true happiness. So that's taking the self as a governing principle, taking the world as a governing principle. It means you're not interested in the opinions of the 
people around you, not that world or your social world, your family, your friends. The Buddha reminds you that there are people who can read minds. There are devas who can read minds. They might be reading yours. What would they think? See, look at this person who said that he or she was going to be practicing the Dharma. Look what they're doing. Look at what they're thinking. Look what they're saying. What would you like them to, to be noticing about you? That's a different world. That's part of the world out there, too, not just the world of your family or the world of your friends. So you keep that in mind when you start feeling lazy and you start feeling you, your practice is beginning to unravel. And then the third principle, of course, is the Dharma, reflecting the fact that this is really an excellent Dharma we have here. This is an excellent opportunity we have. It's not the case that the Dharma is always available. They talk about long periods between the teachings of one Buddha and the arising of the next Buddha. But nobody knows what the Dharma is. Nobody knows how to practice. There are a few people who practice on their own, but it's very, very difficult. Here we have the Dharma all laid out, and it's an excellent Dharma. The people who taught it taught it out of pure motives, the qualities that it develops in our minds as we practice are good qualities, noble qualities, qualities we can be proud of. And you look at the qualities that are developed by the world, the sorts of things that people in the world are enamored of. And you realize that the Dharma and the world go their separate ways. The practice of the Dharma always is countercultural, even in cultures that have had Buddhism for a long time. The normal values of every human culture are to gain wealth, keep reducing, reproducing more people. Gain, status, praise, sensual pleasures, those are the ways of the world. These are the things that people go running after, but the problem is there also is loss, loss of status, criticism, pain, that go along with the other ways of the world. They're, they can't be separated. And it just goes around and around and around, really goes nowhere at all. Whereas the Dharma goes someplace, it is a path that has a goal. But again, it's a path that nobody gets paid to follow, and the values of the culture don't encourage people to follow this path. So you have to make yourself strong, realize, okay, this dharma we have here, this is the dharma of the noble ones, and it's going to require sacrifices, and it's going to go against your grain, and it's going to go against the grain of a lot of people around you. So you need the ammunition, you need the tools, the ways of thinking that will keep you on the path, even when everybody else around you is falling off the path. I and mean, this is true sometimes in monasteries, to say nothing of the world outside. So an important part of the practice is learning how to keep yourself on course, to have these governing principles in you and make sure that they govern your activity and govern your thinking. And that reflection on having the world as a governing principle. Remember, there are people in the world who may not be immediately around you, but there are people practicing someplace in the world. That's the group you want to identify with. So you really can show true love for yourself at the same time you find the excellence of the Dharma in yourself and become an example to others. So try to keep these three governing principles in mind. Because there's nobody else out there who's going to keep them in mind for you. 
you have to see their value, you have to see the truth of what they're saying. So there are times when the practice is lonely, but the rewards are great. The Dharma really is excellent. But to know that for sure, you really have to practice it. And that's when you have your proof. <laughs>